Good morning, Pastor Rob. <clears throat> so I say, hey, coffee with Rob this morning. Um, I wanted to do a follow-up on yesterday's message on the Holy Spirit. Um, I got my helper today, too. He's chilling out over there. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I was just thinking, um, we know if we have, when we're a believer, uh, we have the Holy Spirit within us. But one of the things that I hear as a pastor very often, and even as a brother in Christ, uh, and even myself, I experience this. Um, I have the Holy Spirit in, in me, but I feel powerless. I feel uh, impending doom. I feel lost. I feel like God ain't using me. And that can happen. Now, obviously, there's trials and there's times and there's valleys that we go through just because we have to live this life. And it happens to everybody. Good things happen to bad people, bad things happen to good people, and we get, you know, distracted and feel powerless. But I just want to look at the Holy Spirit today. So um, the Holy Spirit comes within your body when you're saved. You're marked as a property of God. It has the ability to empower you, but there's something that happens as a believer is we get distracted by sin. If you read Romans chapter 7, Paul says, who's going to save me from this wretched body of sin? I do the things I don't want to do. The things I don't want to do, I do. And in Isaiah 59, 2, if you want to know, just for example, why you don't feel powerful or why you feel this impending doom, it's possible that you have something in your life that is causing you to sin. Now, when you sin as a believer, your salvation positionally is secure. The Holy Spirit remains in you. You're still saved. You're still a child of God. But when you sin, the Holy Spirit's power is kind of reduced, for lack of a better word. In other words, your sin separates you from God. It separates you from His, um, not positionally, not salvation, but it separates you from His power, His vision, His inspiration. Uh, it can lead to all kinds of things other than progressing in Christ, progressing in your spirituality, progressing in your power, relationship, influence. And even in your Bible studies, if you're not operating in the Spirit, then uh, you, you can have trouble reading the Word, even. Something that normally is very easy for most of us. Um, so, I guess what I would say is, Paul says in 2 Corinthians 13, 5, evaluate yourself. Actually, he goes as far as say, evaluate yourself to see if you're in the faith. Am I saved? Did I mean it? You know, did I get baptized uh, because my friends did. Do I really mean it? And I always say uh, at the church, I would baptize people twice. If they were baptized as a child and they really didn't understand it, then I would have them get baptized again. Why not? Because they made a decision at that time to do it. But so number one, your sin separates you from God. Isaiah 59, 2. First thing on that is this. If you are separate, if you're in sin, living in sin, choose to live in sin, then it will separate you from God. It will separate you from His power, His salvation, because you're living in sin and continuing to choose to live in sin and rejecting the cross or God's forgiveness. Therefore, you are separated from God. You're in the world. You are not a child of God. That's number one. Sin separates you from God if you continue to reject God. The greatest sin, by the way, is the rejection of the cross of the blood of Jesus Christ. Greatest sin. If you want to go to hell, you can send yourself there by rejecting uh, God's free gift from grace through faith uh, in Jesus Christ, which is salvation in Jesus Christ. So that's number one. Sin separates you from God eternally, should you allow that to remain that way. Number two, uh, sin separates us from, uh, I'm saved, but I'm not operating. I'm not, I don't, I feel useless. Sin separates us uh and, and uh, keeps us from being powerful in God. Let me give you a few examples that I wrote down. I feel spiritually useless. So here, evaluate your life just to see why you feel spiritually useless. Number one, there's always times of trial, tribulation, valleys, things that we go through that God tests us. And we talked about it in uh, 1 Peter 5. But are you in a good Bible preaching church? That's pure obedience. Going to church is what God says. Uh, keep Sunday for God alone. Are you praying on a regular basis? Are you reading your Bible on a regular basis? Are you listening to God? Are you listening to the people around you? He's going to tear the house up. But are you listening? So <clears throat> that, that's, that's another one. 
I hear so many times and I, and I counsel people and they're like, I just feel useless. I don't feel like God's using me. Well, are you doing the three essentials? Going to church, reading your Bible, and praying. No, I can usually ask that. And that's always the, the answer I get is, no, I'm not doing any of that. Well, that's why you feel useless. That's your fault. You're not operating in the Spirit because you're not feeding the Spirit by going to church, by praying, and by, there we go, and by going to church, by praying, and by reading your Bible. How are you going to know what God wants you to do if you don't know the, His Word? So that's, that's the thing. Are you listening? Uh, and then evaluate your life. Are you in a sin habit? Uh, pornography is huge. I know coming up, even as a Bible college student, I had to see preachers counsel me, help me to get over this because the pornography in my life was huge. In the military, my uncles introduced me to it when I was six. And, and that was something very difficult for me to overcome. So I wasn't feeling the power of God because I was caught in that. Because to me, it was just kind of normal at the time. And I learned differently. Are you caught up in lust? Are you caught up in greed? Is money your, your idol? Are you caught up in gossip? Are you talking about people? Are you backstabbing people? You can't operate for it with God when you're going against the very crown of his creation. I hate people. Well, that's the crown of God's creation. You can't operate in God's kingdom powerfully through the Holy Spirit if you're picking on people. Because that's what Jesus came for, to save people. Gossiping, vanity. Oh, I, I gotta look good. I'm concentrating on what I look like, what I smell like. There's nothing wrong with looking good, feeling good, going to the gym. But are you obsessed with it? Because now you're you're distracting yourself from spending time with God and money. Going out and getting money, 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 money. Everybody wants money. Well, I think when Heidi and I were first married, I got a couch. Our first couch was out of a dumpster, and I sometimes I think we had a lot more fun going to school at Florida sleeping on a couch out of the dumpster than I have when you feel like you have so much to lose or you want to gain even more. So just think about that. So evaluate your life. Are you in a sin habit? Are you lusting? Are you greedy? And this is just a few examples. You know what it is. Your thought life. Confess it. Repent of it. That means turn away from it. Confess it to God. Give it to God. Lay it at the altar. And then uh, stay. that's how you stay in your A game. By keeping your body confessed up, prayed up, read up, in the church, part of a body, operating in the spirit, not allowing yourself to be distracted. Um, so just evaluate your life. And so what was the other thing I had here? I had a couple more. Oh, distraction. So look at this. This is a little tactic of the devil. The devil did this to Jesus in Luke 4 and Matthew 4. I wanted to distract him from going to the cross. The devil, because it's not a sin, will distract you from going to church. He will distract you like this, from reading your Bible. He will do these little things because it's not a sin to be distracted. Oh, I got to go to the grocery store. Oh, I got to call my sister. Oh, I got to go to a soccer game. Oh, shoot, I forgot. I got to. And next thing you know, you're wore out. You're trying to you're trying to go to sleep at night and you're realizing you forgot to read your Bible. Therefore, you feel powerless. You feel useless and you're distracted because it's not a sin. And the devil knows that, but I can distract you. And if I distract you, I make you useless for the kingdom of God. And therefore, we start feeling impending doom. We start feeling dread. We start feeling we're useless. We start feeling lost. Why? Because we don't spend time with our God. And that's what he wants us to do. Spend time in prayer. Spend time reading. And, and on, then spend time putting him in, in the cage or outside where you have time to spend alone if you have one of these. He's a great dog. But I'm telling you, he'll distract you from doing what God's called you to do. So, in closing... You don't feel powerful. And remember this too. Fine, fine. I'm sorry. I always I do this. But uh, remember David prayed in Psalm 51. That'll always be one of my foundational teachings. Is that David prayed, please don't take your spirit from me. And why was that? Because he saw in 1 Samuel 16, 14, what happened to Saul when God removed his spirit from him. Saul was useless. He removed his the spirit from him. He was powerless. And he eventually lost the kingdom. So when David sinned, he confessed his sin and, uh, and said, please don't take your spirit from me. Please forgive me. Pray that same prayer. God, forgive me for my sin. Don't take your spirit from me. Restore me. And he will restore you instantly. If you confess your sin, he's faithful and just and will forgive you of your sin and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. So to stay on your end game with God, pray, read the Bible, attend church, be patient, listen evaluate your life, see what you're doing wrong, and correct it. And then 
God will restore you right back on where you started and, and keep on going for God in power in the Holy Spirit. So have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. We're going to do uh, start maybe Mark chapter 1. If you want to read ahead, it will be Mark chapter 1, like verses 1 through 8.